So you're thinking of moving to Clover, South Carolina, and you're wondering what's it gonna cost? How much are houses? What's the grocery store look like? Can I afford a loaf of bread? Stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you all about the cost of living right here in Clover, South Carolina. Hi, I'm Joe McIntosh with EXP Realty and welcome to another episode of the Carolina Salute where we cover everything Charlotte, both north and south of the border. Every day, I help people just like you move all around this city. So whether you're one day or one year out, give me a call, shoot me a text, an email, schedule a Zoom, clap some pigeon, whatever you're most comfortable with, get in touch with me so I can get you the information you need to make the most informed move possible. Today, we're covering cost of living right here in Clover, South Carolina, so you can see if it makes sense for you and your budget. So let's go. So the first place I want to start as I talk about cost of living here in Clover is going to be the cost of housing. Housing here, man, there is really something for everyone. To be a smaller town of only around 7,000 people, there's really a diverse range of housing options. You can live in something built in 1920, one of the original homes, beautiful front porches, amazing craftsmanship and character. Now, most of those homes are gonna need a ton of work, so you kinda have to understand what you're undertaking. If that was a route you decided to go, you know, behind me is probably one of the more modern looking houses in you know, the whole city. A lot of the city is just gonna be traditional little ranch homes. And there's a massive spread, like I said, your available options here. You know, from early 1900s homes to brand new subdivisions with just kind of a house, 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 more of a very community feel, or what I like to call a country suburb, which is where you've got bigger custom homes on one acre lot. The most affordable home right now is a two bed, one bath, and it's on the market at 189,000. And the most expensive home is on the market at 1.17. Million. Now that one's almost 5,000 square feet and sits on 11 acres. A lot of the cost there is going to be in the acreage. As you get outside of the city, you know, you're going to get homes on more acreage. One thing to remember, hey, your fairy tale of getting five acres and a house and only paying 300 grand. Hey, for York County, that fairy tale is over. Remember, we touch Mecklenburg and Charlotte and anything that does that has become expensive. Your median house price is going to be in the high threes to low fours, depending on what you want. But like I just said, hey, you've got a myriad of options and a good set of options that are quality homes south of that. So I hope that gives you a little idea of, you know, home prices, the home prices that are going to set out on an acre. Some of those, your lowest price out there is going to be about 450 and they're going to top out at almost 1 million, depending on the size of home and how customized that home was. There are some rental options in the area, very few. So there we are on the cost of housing. Stay with me and we're going to cover some more of living expenses, cost of living in Clover. One of your most popular grocery stores in the area is going to be Food Lion. So what do you say? Hey, let's go inside and check out what's it gonna cost you to get milk, bread, some chicken and some steak and feed your family because food outside of your housing a lot of times becomes your next most expensive cost. Will y'all stick with me? Let's go inside and check it out. Hey, so here we are over at the bread aisle. Everybody's always curious what's a loaf of bread. This nature's own here. Your butter bread's going to be $3.89 a loaf. And this is just the grocery store inside. Let's talk a little bit about the cost to operate your homes. I'm here in Boschimer Farms, probably one of the biggest subdivisions here in Clover. But an important question is, hey, what does it cost to cut my lights on and heat my house and keep it cool in the summertime? Definitely something you're going to have to do. 
Power here is about 13% less than the national average, which is really nice. And your power company is gonna be Duke Power, who is a massive company here. If you've heard me talk about the rivers and the lakes here, they kind of control the water line and have massive power stations. Here, water, water has gotten a little less expensive. Um, the city took it over from Blue Granite Water, which was nice, so we're saving a little bit of money there. Now, your peak power times are gonna be in the summer, June to August, as you do everything you can to stay cool. You've been to the splash pad, you're taking the kids to the, to the pool, and you're coming home and you're just trying to survive. So just kind of understand that, hey, your highest power bills are gonna be June to August. There's some of your cost, your average power bill is gonna be around $155 and you will have gas and power depending on your home. So if you've got a gas hot water heater and you've got three women in your house like I do with extremely long hair and they wash it, your water bill and gas bill might be a little higher than you'd expect but still very, very affordable as compared to the national average. So there's a little bit on utilities and what you can expect. Y'all stick with me, we'll get into houses and the rest of the cost of living. So let's talk taxes, because everyone knows Uncle Sam is gonna get theirs. And South Carolina is known for having a very favorable tax environment. So let's start with property taxes. With property taxes, it's one of the few times you could probably get a raise without having to do more work or change jobs. I mean, you might have to move states, so that is pretty major there. But for your county, the county's average property tax is 0.65% and properties are reassessed every five years. And something's pretty cool that they've done is as far as property taxes are concerned, your home can only appreciate 15%. You're gonna be an investor in South Carolina. Rental properties get taxed significantly more. Please get with me on that so we can kind of dial in exactly what that's gonna look like and also work with a CPA. So as you do your numbers, you can see, hey, did this rental property make sense or did it not? So that's everything kind of on property taxes. For your vehicle registration, hey, it's gonna be a little bit more and I'd rather pay a little bit more on registration for a vehicle than a little bit more on a home that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. When you first get to South Carolina, it's going to cost you about $305 per vehicle and you only pay that one time here in the state. Then after that, it's just a normal vehicle and license plate registration fee, but it's going to be a little bit higher on cars, on boats, on RVs, on toys, on all of those things you've got to get registered on. Now, something cool, something really cool, South Carolina does not tax your military retirement. So there's no state income tax on your military retirement. And the highest income tax bracket is 7%, and that's at $16,000. So odds are good all of you watching this will be will pay 7% income tax on your income to the state of South Carolina. There are some other cool tax advantages here. I'm not a CPA. So please find an awesome CPA, work with yours to see, hey, what are the tax implications of moving down here to Clover, South Carolina? Child care, how much is it gonna cost? Who's gonna help me change some diapers when I go to work? I know that's a worry for you, and I wish I could tell you, hey, it's incredibly cheap here, and you're not gonna have to spend a small fortune. It's expensive. It's gotten expensive everywhere. You could spend anywhere from about $1,200 a month all the way to probably $2,000 a month per child. Depending on how many days a week and what types of services your child may need. So I wish I could tell you it was really inexpensive here, but it's not. Also, lots of places here are full. We've had tons and tons and tons of families and children move in to the city and the area. So lots of child development, lots of your early childhood education and your daycares and your preschools are running very close to max capacity. 
So please get online early as you start thinking, hey, we're gonna move to Clover. I got that job transfer. Or I found the perfect house. This is where I wanna live. Please, I beg you, log on, go to Google, start calling these facilities and ask it, hey, do you have space? And does my child have to be potty trained by X amount of age? Some places won't take them after a certain age if they're not potty trained. There's a little bit on that. There is a free pre-K offered through the public school systems at certain public schools. Go onto their website. You can find out everything you need to know about the free pre-K offered through the public school system. All right, so you're thinking of moving, right? And let's get into some of your entertainment costs and also, hey, what's it gonna cost for your kiddos to go play ball here in the city of Clover? And just kind of some things to do and the cost associated with it. Your family YMCA, there is a small Y here in Clover. There's also a really big one over in Lake Wiley. It's absolutely amazing. Your family plans here for the Clover YMCA are gonna be 80 or $90. And your youth membership's gonna be $35 a month. City of Clover, youth sports are gonna run between $50 and $70 a season, depending on age and the sport that your child decides to play. Anytime fitness is gonna start at $24.99 bi-weekly. That's according to their website. And if you're looking for more of a kind of a CrossFit free weight, more of a like gym gym is what you're looking for. Hey, then go check out Redemption Fitness and they're gonna be about $135 a month. Odds are good, hey, if you move to Clover, when it comes to entertainment, you weren't looking for clubs and bars and nightlife. Well, you're not gonna find it here. So I hope that's not why you're moving. It's a very small town, very family centered, and you can get into Charlotte and Gast Gastonia for both of those things when you need to go out. A lot of people have boat questions. Hey, boats can be expensive. You can log on and see the astronomical price some boats cost these days, and you can still find some affordable boats laying around, but you're gonna have to store it somewhere. Odds are good, or you know, in your backyard, depending on your HOA. For dry stack here, what we call dry storage, which is pretty cool. Place like Marine Max, they'll they'll store it inside their big warehouse. And that's gonna start between $350 and $400 a month for dry stack. You call them, hey, I'm coming down to get on my boat. They drop the boat in the water for you. You go have fun, come back, park it, and they put it back up. And wet slips in the area are gonna start at about $550 a month. So if you know, you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna move to the lake, I'm gonna buy a boat. Hey, just remember, if you're gonna store it somewhere at the lake, there's gonna be a cost associated. So that's kind of everything, simple cost here for Clover. And also, hey, for fun things to do, you can run up to Crowder's Mountain just in North Carolina, probably takes you about 15 minutes. That's an amazing state park. Or you can run down to Kings Mountain, about another 15, 20 minutes. Maybe in that park's gonna cost you three bucks to get in. If you're looking for a public beach to go play in the water, go down to Ebenezer Park, amazing park, lots of fun. And that one will cost you $3 to get in. Do a Google search. I know they've just closed for some maintenance. So we'll see when that's going to open back up. And then you can get over to, you know, the new Allison Creek Park, which is also going to cost you $3 to get in there also, or $40 for a year pass. And that'll cover Allison Creek Park and Ebenezer. And then there's loads of other parks and things to do here in the area. So it doesn't cost a whole lot of money to get outside, enjoy this beautiful weather we are blessed with here and have an awesome time. So I hope y'all have enjoyed this. Let's talk gas and commute costs. So you see behind me, you see this gas price. This is November, 2023. Gas is $2.69 a gallon. That's pretty awesome. Don't worry. Glass, gas does fluctuate here just like it does in the rest of the country. But when I moved off the West Coast, I've been enjoying these gas prices. And I'm sure you will too. And gas is usually a little bit cheaper on the South Carolina side of the border than it is on the North Carolina side of the border. 
But if you're commuting, that's a real cost that is gonna add up for you. Regardless of the price per gallon, you're gonna have, hey, you're gonna have your price per gallon in gas, you know, every couple of days, plus your oil changes, and plus just the cost of car ownership. If you don't have a lot, lot a big commute now, you know, hey, we're an hour into Charlotte, we're about 18 minutes up into Gastonia. So depending on where you work, car ownership, cost of car maintenance really could add up for you because there's not public transportation here. There's not city buses, there's no subway, there's no train, you're gonna have to drive everywhere. So just kind of remember that as you start going over your budget, dig, digging in your wallet to see, hey, does this move make sense for me? car ownership is going to be one of them. So what have you thought about Clover, South Carolina? We covered a little bit of the cost of living, some home prices, some taxes, some other things you're going to spend money on. If I can never do anything for you. Please don't hesitate. Give me a call, shoot me a text, an email, clap some pigeons, schedule a Zoom, whatever you're most comfortable with. I look forward to hearing from you. Y'all have a wonderful day and thank you for watching another episode.